As you know, um, yesterday we kind of wrapped up a little bit on our, tra our work zone portion of the conference. Today we've been focused more on traffic issues, but there are so many crossover things that it's um, useful to have the two together because you really can't do traffic management and traffic safety and work zone safety without a coordinated effort. And we've seen a lot of that evident in the presentations today. This morning we want to wrap up and we've asked some of our partners that have been very close partners in, in developing the conference and operating the clearinghouse, etc., to come in and give their overview, their reviews of what they've seen um, and, and their speculation on what we might be looking at in the future. And of course, um, our first presenter will be Jerry Ullman. He is the project manager. Well, he, he does a lot of things at TTI. There's hardly a study that comes out of that place that doesn't has his, has his name associated with it somehow. Um, but he's also been our contact and a good friend um, for nine years, ten years, since we have began the Works on Clearinghouse project. So we're very glad to have Jerry Ullman here. And um, go ahead, Jerry. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks. Thanks, Brad. Yeah, I want to express my appreciation for, for those of you who stuck around to, to the end here. Uh, I, I, and in reward for that, I'm only going to speak for maybe two, three minutes. So uh, that then we'll get out of here. And uh, But I did want to go this morning and, and spend a little bit of time, uh, and I, I didn't go f as far into what I think the future holds. I, I decided to, uh, two slides, and I'm going to go through four points of what I think I learned this week. It's almost like a, what I did on my summer vacation kind of thing. Uh, and I tried to think in global global third terms. Actually, I used uh, some of my coworkers last night. Uh, we sat around, and we, 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 we did a little brainstorm ourselves. Well, what do we think we heard? What do we think we've learned? And that kind of thing. So. First thing I think we've heard, or what, that we learned uh, by the by the end of the week, I, I don't think any of us is going to worry about uh, uh, you know having to look for a different job, a different field of a different profession anytime soon. I think you've between the uh, the you know the concerns about the fact that we you know traffic's continuing to grow, congestion levels. You look at all the trends. Uh, TTI mobility report came out again, and we we, we saw double digit increases there. Uh, you know that that's going to continue. Same time, I saw saw the, the art but presentation about where our funding really sits, and that's a very scary scenario when when you factor in cost of materials, how they've escalated, and some of the other things that uh, uh, that, that has happened that we're actually going down in terms of what's our, our available funding level. And you hear what it, it, on the hill what what is being talked about in terms of no no taxes or no increases and that kind of stuff. We do have a, a, a major challenge before us and it's only gonna get gonna get worse. Uh, it's the only way we're gonna deal with that, I think, in my mind, is is this things like this conference where we're talking about innovation and moving moving you know, or, or bridging these gaps through innovations. Um, you know, I think if if people back in the the eighteen hundreds had tried to extrapolate based on the horse and carriage kind of mindset about what would happen, you know, 100 years from now, you know, they would have predicted nothing would have worked. We wouldn't have had enough hay to feed all the horses. We'd have been up to our knees in horse dung. And, you know, those kinds of, of dire predictions would have been a lot like we're doing right now and saying, oh, we just, this is not going to be doable. Innovations obviously came along, and, and here we are today, you know, way better than, than what anybody would have predicted years ago, and that's what we're going to have to focus on. And hopefully, you all saw things this week that and heard of things that all that'll spark your your imagination and uh, and uh, your innovations that you see opportunities for. And we keep going in that way. I I did for those of you that were in this session right before this one, I set this up, and and uh, it may be a little bit sound initially contrary that that we had actually a statement about. That we're being forced about to worry about mobility, and that's at the at the expense of safety. And and I think for the examples that were provided, that's true. That that we we push if we if our focus is strictly getting people as fast as possible in all situations, or letting them drive as fast as they want to. Yeah, there there there's that mindset versus safety doesn't mix. But I think in in the big picture things, we we need to keep in mind that they do they are linked. In fact, in in both ways that. That uh, if we if we're able to maintain good levels of mobility, and that means you know getting to point A to point B on a reliable time schedule. That uh, that, that with a smooth traffic flow, with cooperative behaviors, all things like that. You know, we, we do maintain a high level of mobility, and we do maintain good levels of safety. If we lose either one of those, you know, we get backups, bottlenecks, those kinds of things. Boom, you see rear end crashes increase and safety degrades. On the same side of things. Uh, uh, you know, you, you have you know designs and operational strategies that aren't compatible with 
with uh, the driving behavior and you start creating accidents when you know the accidents create bottlenecks themselves and we have backups and so anyway that I, I think that they uh, uh, and that's supposed to be issues that was early this morning and mr. mr. you there but uh, uh, again that's, those are those are linked together my third point uh, and I heard this today too and I think that that's a good point that we continue to keep in mind that that we, we have, a, have a good industry here where we're promoting stealing of each other's ideas and stealing you know in a in a cooperative sense uh, start first day of, of the session second day of the session uh, Major Carrick at the Florida High Patrol came in and talked about all the things that they're doing down here he gave credit uh, I don't think he, he claimed that he had any of original ideas he had stolen them from from every place that he's, he's been and and uh, we, we listened to the innovations that uh, were talked about with uh, the bridge uh, replacement project in this last session seeking out trying and, and improving upon those ideas is, is a is a key uh, emphasis area I think uh, of this conference why this conference is is held is 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 to, to get that kind of a thing one thing I as a researcher I want to, to emphasize and encourage and, and uh, uh, promote is is that you know doing these things is is, is excellent and a good way for us to, to, to keep moving things forward innovate uh, the more that you can let others know about it that, that the more that you're benefiting the profession profession um, and, and not only the successes we always hear about the successes and 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 it's really tough to turn around and, and, and come back forward and say well, we tried this and we couldn't make it work or we this didn't work and that kind of thing and we don't ever write those up in reports hardly ever we do as, as, as researchers and but we, we always I mean it's not something you want to have happen but those are as valuable knowing what not to do next time as it is what to do so uh, a key point there uh, this last point uh, I think uh, uh, is important from from the from the record going back to the recognition of just how critical the transportation is to our to our society how the how, how risky it is when you look at where, where trends are going and, and, and that uh, we need to be looking as part of this, the innovation process, uh, uh, recognizing where we have vulnerabilities in our, in our system, both from a, you know, everything from a, from a disaster response to, to operational peak period strategies. Uh, and, and I think in terms of redundancy, I know redundancy in some ways from an engineer's perspective you know, is required, but the same token, we, we sometimes think that's a that's a overkill waste of resources if we can just slice down and get you know more out of what we've got available uh, we, we think that's always an improvement and and you know we have to keep in mind that there is a lot of uncertainty in, in, in what uh, we're dealing with what we're dealing with the future uh, and, and be, being able to have this uh, or think in terms of, of where we where it's possible where it's cost-effective uh, looking for redundancy in, in the way we do things is is, uh, uh, is important so with that that's that's all I had to say thank you all for coming uh, and I look forward to seeing you at the next conference so thanks thank you very much Jerry and of course for for most of the people in this room um, Jerry is no stranger nor is Ken Kabetsky uh, from Ashtell. And it seems like every time I talk to Ken or I try to talk to Ken, he is somewhere in the country running some conference, making some presentation, attending some meeting. Um, probably one of the, the most energetic and busy people that I know of when it comes to traffic management and traffic safety. And so we're very pleased that he's been here, been very helpful in organizing the conference. And we'll give Ken a few moments to talk about what his observations are. Thank you, Brad. Yeah, you're right. Sometimes I wake up and figure out what city am I in. Um, but at any rate, uh, I've just had a, a few observations. First of all, uh, you know, I haven't heard a good story all week, or at least uh, any of the sessions I've been in. But when, when I was sitting there listening to the golfer yesterday talking about the long ball and how to hit it and all the other stuff, it reminded me of a story of a couple old gentlemen and I can relate to that because I'm old, a little older than most of you, uh, uh, being avid golfers. And they were in now in, a, in, a, uh, in, in an extended care area, but they were still able to, uh, to talk about golf and do those things. And one had arthritis bad, and the other one's eyesight was bad. So they really couldn't, they really couldn't uh, uh, play golf anymore. But he said, we've talked a lot about partnerships. And they said, you know, let's do this as a partner. He said, the guy with the bad knees has good eyes. 
and he uh, he can watch the guy who has poor eyesight, but he could still really hit the ball. So they teamed up, got a golf cart, went out the golf course, and uh, they get up there to the tee, and the guy who has the good eyesight is standing alongside of the guy with, that uh, is going to be hit the ball. So they're all set, he reaches back, the guy gonna swing, hit the ball, and it just sailed down the runway, down the fairway. And the guy said, can you see it? Yeah, yeah. I said, I can see it. I can see it. Boy, it's going. It's going. So they get in the golf cart. They drive on down the fairway. And the guy said, now, just where what it was. Where was it? He said, oh, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> so age sometimes uh, uh, approaches us in different ways. Uh, so let me just get a, a couple of minutes of dealing with this whole issue of solving congestion. I think we heard a lot about that. In fact, Rick Kapka even mentioned that as one of the Federal Highway and Priorities. And one of the areas is we, we have two ways or two things to deal with. One is this dealing with it on a reincurring, uh, uh, a reincurring uh, daily uh, process. We probably pretty well know as commuters where it's going to happen and why, and we adjust accordingly. And we have things like these, these, uh, these management, traffic management centers that help us do that. And you heard a good bit about that. And if you took the tour, you went out and seen what they were doing. And if you've seen the demo about incident management, that's the other aspect of, of where we really are beginning to show some strides. Uh, I can remember going back in my Colon career when we first brought traffic management centers into the, into the, into the scene. Uh, we, we, were, we thought we were really doing a lot of, lots of good things, and they still are. Uh, but we find that it's that incident that occurs where we really have these problems, and I think we've seen a good bit of that. In fact, the demo out in the lot was one of those, one of those areas. Where, and I, I begin to see where people believe now that the service patrol and the ones they have here in Florida, particularly in this, in this district, uh, are really active. And I think you'll see in the future uh, probably some, some funding, hopefully additional funding, that would come forth in any, any re reauthorization. Uh, it all gets down to this whole issue of partnerships. You need to work, and, and, and that's where you really need to bring the enforcement people, the operations people, the maintenance people, and the local community all have to recognize that they got to they got to row out of the same boat and until that happens uh, it, it you'll you'll uh, you'll struggle so I think we've seen and demonstrated a, a good bit of how partnerships work and how well they work in fact I I sat in on one of the uh, regional meetings that that was uh, they were they were bringing all these particular people together and this whole issue with of hot lanes. We talked a little bit about that in, in one of the areas. And I think this is another area of solving congestion at, at the price of what you're willing to pay. Uh, and it's not automatic tooling. It should be automatic tolling. But, uh, you know, I guess I'm a carpenter, so, you know. Uh, at any rate, at that rate, that, that, that's, that remains to be seen. One of the things that, you know, everybody said, well, we ought to toll. And quite frankly, you can't toll our way out but we can control it in some ways. Uh, technology. Uh, the, you know, the implementation of technology, you hear it and you hear it and you hear it. It takes too long and it's too risky. Um, I've been in this business for a long time. And, you know, I get daily, or not daily, but I used to get lots of queries about, especially since I've been with Ashto's, about, you know, I have this new widget. How can I, how can I get approval from all the DOTs? And my response has always been, if I could do that for you, you couldn't pay me enough money. Uh, so, but you've seen in the in the uh, in the tech fair some of the new technologies. You've seen some of the advanced areas that we uh, that we uh, are really working in terms of uh, not only uh, uh, the uh, the ability to detect to detect vehicles, know where they're at, where they're going, et cetera, and so forth. But even the technology that you've seen out there in the demonstration of that parking lot, uh, where they were able to bring in a wrecker and, and, and uh, write that vehicle up 
uh, that truck up without blocking the lane, so to speak. Uh, that had to be specifically designed for that, for that need. And I think that's where, you know, in the past, we've adopted a lot of farm equipment to do things we thought we ought to be doing something on the road. Uh, and again, you, you heard uh, uh, Rick Kapka talk about long life, uh, uh, you know, highways for life. And, and we need to think about the technology that we have a, bill, a way for us to take and bring in new materials. Uh, unfortunately, as government is government, we tend to do the same old, same old because that's what we're comfortable for. But coming to conferences like this and being able to share with not only the, the, uh, the user, the, uh, the, 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 the suppliers, and the inventors, if you will, um, is an opportunity to partner in the right direction. Um, it, it's something that takes a long time, but don't give up. It'll work. So those, uh, Brad, are primarily my focus of, uh, uh, you know, I've had 125 slides to show you, but I, I no. <laughs> uh, any rate, uh, I want to thank you for staying as far as my part of the program is concerned. Uh, it's always uh, nice that I've thought for a minute that it would be Brad and I and Jerry, but, <laughs> you know, and we may have to bring in some coffee and donuts or something. But, no, again, thanks, thanks for staying. And on behalf of AASHTO, I think this has been a great conference, and I look forward to help uh, organize the next one. Thank you. Well, once again, thank you. I, I don't really have anything to add to what's been said already today, other than just a few points of, of interest, um, uh, observations myself. Um, for one thing, um, if you are like me, there have been three concurrent tracks running, and it was very difficult to try to pick topics. We're running just the conference in the mornings, um, didn't have a lot of time, and only had three tracks to run. And still, I was sitting in one session wondering what was going on in the other session and hoping to get some of that information. Um, what we've done, we've taken the time to videotape at least one of the sessions each time and tried to pick the one that we thought was had the broadest general interest to the public. And then we've captured the presentations, the PowerPoint presentations, et cetera, from all the presenters. And all these, this will be posted on the new website, website of the Work Zone Safety Information Clearinghouse. Um, as you've seen on the podium, the address is pretty intuitive, um, just workzonesafety.org. Um, give us a few weeks to get everything put together. We'll, we'll get the presentations up there very quickly. The videotape, of course, will take some editing, and that will be streamed up there as well. Um, and just want to remind you about the Clearinghouse to use it. It's a great free resource, and if you have information that you think should be up there or you have materials you would like us to post, you know, feel free to do that. Um, Jerry's here. You'll Maybe many of you met Hong Yu over the week. She's been down at the Work Zone booth on the exhibit floor. Um, wonderful people and very competent. And Cassandra, ah, here's Cassandra. She's the, the technical person at TTI and behind not just the Clearinghouse but many, many others, but has been inter inter intimately involved in rebuilding the Clearinghouse. And it's, it's actually a, a, an entirely new site. And um, as you have maybe observed or saw demonstrated yesterday, or hopefully we'll just go home and, and try it and use it. And again, it's not a static resource. It's going to continue to grow. We'll add resources as they come. I was very interested in this last session in this room where we talked about a lot of the innovations and ideas that come from not just here but around the world. And we've had some very good information. Um, Morris sitting up here on the front table, I found some very good interesting information that was brought to us from our friends in the UK. So we've distributed their materials and more are here for your um, taking. And again, these are the types of things we'll try to gather, um, not just stateside practices, but anywhere we find a good idea. We'll try to get that, and as we get permission, we'll post it or link to it on the Clearinghouse. So thank you very much for your attendance today. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, we'll be back again in two years. This is an every other year event, and um, can't tell you exactly where that's going to be right now, but keep your uh, websites open or your web addresses open, and tune into the Clearinghouse, and we'll make sure you know about it. So thank you very much, and we hope you go down and enjoy the last few minutes of the show that opens up in just a few minutes.